Hi, I'm Cindy. This is Kim. We're with Hands-On Pet Massage. We'd like to welcome you to our series of instructional videos on how to give your pets a massage. Kim, would you like to explain what we, what and how we hope to accomplish this? Yes. Um, on the cat DVDs, what we've done is we've used multiple cats so that you can get an idea of how they're going to perform at first. Because cats are a little more finicky than dogs, so they don't always sit still as long. And after they've become comfortable with it, then they sit still longer. And you'll see that at the end of the instructions, how they, when they get more comfortable with it, then they just kind of chill out and let you do more. Yeah, I think you'll notice that we have some cats, some repeat customers that come back for more. So sit back, enjoy, learn, and help strengthen the bond with your pet. Hi, we're working with cats today. And as you're going to see, we're going through multiple cats. Cats, unlike dogs, dogs will stay there all the time and let you work forever. Cats only want so much and then they're done. So what we're going to do is multiple cats and you'll kind of get the idea of what we're talking about. And then you'll, you know, you'll have to work with your cat where they're at and where you're at. And when you're by yourself or with the family, they're going to let you do a lot more than when there's a group around. Kim, are there any special hand positions or finger techniques that we need to use for cats? Yes, they're all similar to what we did with the uh, dog ones in case you have that. So you can kind of watch them both for where the animals put their self. But you're going to, your hand's kind of in a soft C. And I'm just going to use my arm so that you can kind of get an idea. The thumb is over here and it's doing this. And the top is doing this. So you're doing them both at the same time. Now you're going to start light, but not so light that it tickles. And you're going to get firmer. If your hand's cramping, you're way too firm. And not only that, cats aren't going to tolerate it. They'll be gone. So you know your cat better than anyone else does. And I, at least I hope you do. So what you're going to want to do is start with what their favorite things are and introduce some of the other techniques. As they get comfortable with them, they will let you do more. So one of the things was the soft C. You're also going to do a light brush down. It's not real, I mean, it's not so soft, it's ticklish, but it's light enough that it just kind of moves the energy off their body. Start from the head and go off the tail. There again, you might have a cat that likes you to do their tail and they can't stand their head being done. One of the other things is that you're going to try to do their ears. You're going to use these two fingers and you're going to do the same C or you're going to do the light and you're going to come on one side of the ear doing it kind of a, you know, nice C. You're going to come down the middle, and you're going to come down the outside. And by the time you've done that, hi, and you want more seed cats, don't usually come up and ask for it as much. Dogs, you can never do enough on dogs. So when you're back to the cats, and you're doing their ears, then you kind of do their head, and there's not a routine. They don't all like that. So you're going to have to work with your cat a lot harder than you would have to work with your dog on finding out what, you know, they will and won't tolerate. Yes. What about location? I know some of the cats are not real comfortable being here in the center of this group, you know, with all the attention focused on them. Is it better to pick a spot where they are really comfortable? I mean... You know, cats are just funny. You're, some of them you're going to have to go to where they're at. And frankly, if you've got many of them, that'll be the one who doesn't get petted a lot because they don't like it. But you'll want to massage them at least once or twice a week. Because remember, although you're doing it for de-stressing and relaxation, you also want to be assessing to make sure that they don't have some kind of a medical need that you just can't see by looking at them so that you can take them to the vet if they have it. So if you have one that doesn't demand a lot of attention and you have multiple animals like a lot of us, then at least do the time to check everything out and then the rest of them that love it well they'll ask for more and cats versus dogs cats generally don't like a crowd not all of them there's but they're a little more finicky than dogs so you have to work with them a little bit more um, some of them have a time frame that they like it they want it in the morning but they don't like it at night so that just comes with knowing your animal okay Kim are there special techniques you have to use for cats you have to work with them. That's what I've been trying to say through the whole tape. You're going to try to do the techniques that we show you. But each cat has a very distinct personality. Most dogs, you can kind of start where they're at and work them into it a little faster. Cats are just, you know, 
they're their own individual personality. Each one of them has a time limit on how long they're going to do it. But you start where they're at, and then as you do it more and more, you'll be able to build up more time. But also, cats don't really like an audience. So when you're by yourself or with your family and everything's back to normal, when, when we're around, it's not quite so normal, then they react to that. So when you're in your own home setting and you're taking time, as you introduce different parts, you'll find out what they like and they'll get to be where they tolerate different things, even if they're not liking it, as you keep doing it each day. All right, so it's all right to start it at their tail or their back legs or their front, but follow their lead. Start with what right. they want and then work on to the other areas. Right. You, cats are just not going to let you coax them into the area that you want them to be in as much as dogs will be, so you're going to absolutely work where they're at. And then when they're done, they're done. They may come back in 10 or 15 minutes, but at that moment when they're done, well, unless you want them to you know, scratch you up or something, <laughs> you just need to work with their level. Okay, great. Hi, I'm Kim with Hands On Pet Massage, and this is Toby. He's 12 years old. I've never worked on Toby before, so you'll get a true meaning of how cats are. Cats are not like dogs. You usually kind of have to work with them on their schedule. I started right here on his head because he's feeling like he wants to run. So just kind of doing a light massage with the pet, very pads of my fingers with a circular motion so you're just kind of doing a nice rub not too soft or it'll tickle just firm enough that he'll relax and if he doesn't like it they'll move the other thing is cats will lean into you a lot so that you'll give them more pressure he's a little nervous right now so I'm going to stay up here just a little bit longer the whole reason that hands-on is doing these is so that you can bond with your animal more. And it's nice to pet them when we all do that, but giving a little bit more pressure and actually moving the muscles and working with the tissue is going to help you relax your animal more. And you're also assessing at the same time to find out if anything's going on that's not normal because then you'd want to call your vet. Now see, he moved, so I'm gonna work with him. Everything you do with your animals is working with them. You're not forcing them. And he seems to like this position better. Well, you like that, don't you? So we're just going to do a couple energy brush-offs. Cats don't like energy work as much as dogs. But when they let you do it, it's wonderful. But if they're not in the mood for it, they'll just get up and walk away. He obviously is kind of liking that, so we'll stay with it. I'm going to rub in the front of his chest and right under his throat area a little. Because that's what he kind of presented. He moved his head to my hand over here so that's why I'm working with that. Normally I like to start on the head and the neck but what you're going to find out is that this is all about them. So you're going to work with where they're at. Now see I kind of snuck back up here. Just doing firm but gentle circular motions. I'm not sure that he totally loves that but we'll move back down by the neck. I'm going to get both sides of his neck while he's letting me do that because it's a little bit tense. And come back around into the chest. And remember, these are just ideas. You don't have to do them in order because you're still working with what they like the most. You'll introduce new things to your cat or your dog and you work with them. Each time you do it a little bit more, then they get to where it's not new and then they kind of let you know which ones they like the most. But I always want to check even if they don't love it, so I make sure nothing's going on. Then I'm not really holding him here. Of course, you know, cats you can't really hold anywhere if they want up. I'm just kind of holding him on my lap a little bit. I wanted to do his face a little bit. He's not sure about this. But remember, I told you they only like so much at a time. So Toby decided he would come back and let us work on him some more. And I'm actually working. See, he's giving me his head. I mean, actually, he's giving me his neck. He's moving his head, so I'm going to work with what he's giving me. One, I want you to be able to see a little more of it. And I'm going to come down off his leg. And he didn't really want me to, so I'm going to come back to his chest. I'm going to come underneath his chin. Most cats like that, but remember, not all. I'm going to come up around his ear and see if he'll let me. 
each time you introduce something to them, they may only, it may only last a few seconds, but every time you go back to work on them, if you do it again, they'll get more comfortable with them. Remember, it's new, and they're not sure about it. Now I'm coming down both sides of his spine, and I'm going to come off his tail if he'll let me. And he likes his hips being worked on. See how he's getting all comfortable? I'm going to brush off his tail. Where do you want me to work? Now, I'm not holding him up here. As you know, you can't really hold a cat up there. If they want off, they'll just kind of claw their way off. Or, and I'm working his hips a little bit, and I've got my right hand underneath his stomach. And he seems to like that, so I'm going to stay with it. Now, see where he did? So I've got both thumbs. He's not really sure which one he wants done the most, so you just work with them. It's supposed to be relaxing for you and fun for you, too. So don't get frustrated. Just work where they're at. And see, I've got one hand over here holding, and I'm not holding tight. And I'm coming down around his tail, and it's a little tight. He keeps bringing his backside to me. So, either it needs extra work, or it's one of his favorite places. I'm going to brush off his tail. And see, he's starting to get a little bit antsy, and I'm not sure if he's just wanting me to move. Okay. So I'm going to work this area more. He seemed, that's what he wants. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. You go where they're at. Now I might sneak a few moves in, in between. But as you've seen, cats don't always stay as long as dogs. So you have a small time frame that you have to introduce them to some of this. Now I'm just going to come up because that's where he's letting me. I put my left hand over his tail and his hips. And I'm just going to do a little energy work while I do this because he seems to be wanting that. Come down by a side. I'm actually using the whole hand. But I'm using a little more pressure with my fingers. But you're not digging in. You're just being firm. Just assessing to see how it feels. Going to come back around this hip. See? There is something going on here. But it doesn't bother me as bad as it did. So I'm going to work it a little bit. I'm going to slide back up. Come up around his head. He's getting really nice and relaxed. So work with your animals at the pace that they're ready to do. Kim, does the age of the cat make a difference? I would, I know age makes a difference, and we'll go into that in just a second, but I think personality makes the biggest difference, plus the time, when did you get your cat? You know, if you got it as a baby, then by one or two years old, it's already had a lot of pets and a lot of massages. So it's going to depend on their personality first, and then their age. Males, a lot of them, not all of them, as they get older become bigger lap cats. So they'll probably let you work on them more. But it, as you've seen today now, Toby's doing a lot better and it's his second time up here, but he's not so unsure about what's happening. So he's even letting me work the area that's a little bit sore a little at a time. So you're gonna, most of it depends on how long you've had them and how much you've messed with them and what they've had done to them in the past. Now, Toby had the issues with his hip. Was that probably just jumping or on or off something or maybe pulled something? You know, it could have been any of those things. Toby lives with six other cats and two dogs and multiple horses. I mean, it could have been anything. However, he could have jumped and jarred his hips, or he could have been fighting with one of the others. My big concern is, is he's actually letting me do more, so I think it was just tense, you know. Um, but if I, I didn't find any knots, knots or any cuts, <laughs> But if I had if I would have went to the vet. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to assess it later again tonight and tomorrow. But what's happening is as I'm working on it, it's becoming softer. So I think, and I hadn't seen him limping, so I think it's just that he jarred it or, you know, like I said, he plays with other animals, so it could have been any of those things. Okay, but if it had remained tense and he wouldn't let you touch it, is that a sign that you should probably go to the vet, you think? It's definitely a sign for uh, for me. I would be running over there to make sure because my thought is, one, I want to be a good pet owner, and two, I want to, I don't want them to be in pain. And the other thing is, is if you catch illnesses quicker, then generally it's uh, less pain and financially uh, less troublesome to you. I mean, you know, you're going to catch things quicker. Generally, it's going to be a lot less in all areas. Less stress, less finances, and everything else. Well, you're liking that now. Well, and your vet's probably going to appreciate that your cat likes to be touched better, too. I mean, isn't that going to allow for, like, a, a more thorough examination sometimes? 
Yeah, I think I think it would. And the other thing is, is that if you're taking them more, then they're gonna know him, and the more you handle them, I think that's gonna add into that. It's it it has to. Now see, he's really putting his head down. He's cur, and he's purring. And so I'm working a little bit deeper because now he likes it. And remember, work with where your cat is. You like that, don't you? He's a good boy. Where do you want to go? He's not sure what he wants, so I let them move wherever they want. But since he's not moving, I'm going to come around here and do the side a little bit and up around the shoulder. And since he kind of knows what we're doing now, he's not running and jumping off of me. But also remember, they, they don't require as much as dogs do generally. However, I have seen some cats be junkies, just like dogs. And so you'll have to set your limits of what works best for you. Well, and the cats seem to be, I don't know if shyer is the word for it, but the dogs all seem like they're aware that they're on camera and some of them even pose or seem to kind of ham it up where the cats look away now whether it's the people staring at them or just what makes them uncomfortable but you know they a lot of times when they're relaxing their face is hid you know i'm not sure about that i know dogs are hams and they <laughs> like to be a center of attention cats are i'll let you touch me when i want to be touched and dogs are you can touch me anytime you want and even when you don't want to so it's just a personality difference. Dogs are here to serve us, we're here to serve cats. 